Hello there and thank you for keeping us company. This is why in the morning my name is Edereva Hillary. I know I had promised you that we'll be talking about uh, House of Cards but for now uh, let's talk about health. The interview is coming up uh, in a few but for now let's just listen in to the story of Elias Gotho. Uh, MC Eliado, right? Galado. Uh, Alado, yeah. He will tell us his story on how uh, things changed on him, how his life turned around, and how things are now. He had, a, he, had yeah, he got a condition that uh, is normally uh, gotten by kids or children for that case. As an adult, he will tell us how the things became uh, out of hand, came out of hand, and how he. he he came out of it strong. Good morning. Morning. Good to have you here. Thank you so much. Yes. Now tell mm. us about this uh, VVS or this SVV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, the condition is called uh, small vessel vasculitis. Mm -hmm. It's a condition that uh, normally uh, normally it attacks children. Right. And uh, of how old? Um. Uh, just children i'm not sure about the age and everything because they just told me it's a condition that normally it's uh you know mm -hmm. if it's found in children all right and like in on adults so actually i am the first adult patient that the doctors uh, found with this condition okay. and i will tell you that um this condition is very rare yeah. and uh when it comes to an adult if it really gets an adult mm -hmm. it becomes severe mm -hmm. so um i just woke up one morning right with a very uh, sudden pain on my toes right. and uh i i you know i had to visit the local clinic mm -hmm. where they you know looked at it and even without uh, doing any test they concluded that i'm having gout and you know okay. gout attacks only the elderly mm -hmm. yeah so i was in doubts and uh, you know they diagnosed me I went back home mm -hmm. but with time as I continued staying at home it got worse and worse and worse that is when it clicked in my mind that maybe mm -hmm. something ain't right so, wait uh, mm. after you were di diagnosed the first time yeah. with the gout yeah. as they said yeah they gave you treatment they did which never worked never worked okay at uh -huh. all so i it clicked in my mind that something is not right so i, I had to you know visit uh, a, another hospital facility mm -hmm. for a second opinion mm -hmm. and that is where now uh, we went there and uh, the first place i went i remember was an Nairobi east hospital mm -hmm. they did all the doppler for the arteries and the veins I went to German Medical Center. They mm -hmm. also did the Doppler for the veins, mm -hmm. and it was all negative. Mm -hmm. Until now, one day I was in a very bad condition. The pain was really unbearable. Mm -hmm. So I decided to look for. Actually, they advised me to look for a specialist. Mm -hmm. So I went to Aga Khan and found a specialist, now a rheumatologist, mm -hmm. who was able now to tell us that this condition mm -hmm. is a small vessel vasculitis. Right. So all the way, uh, nobody knew about it. Uh, for um, how long was this now? This took about uh, three, three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, because it all started on October 20th. That is when the nightmare, the whole nightmare started last year. Mm -hmm. October 20th. So with, within the margin of uh, three weeks, you were just up and down looking for, okay, what might this be? You know, because even the, 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 the heel of the foot mm -hmm. was... Uh, somehow turning the color was becoming darkish purplish okay. yeah so the rheumatologist told me that this condition i'm suspecting this condition is a uh, small vessel vasculitis mm -hmm. and that is when now he was able to advise me on what to do so he recommended me some drugs and told me to go back home right. and uh, after a week after using the medication that he gave me i was supposed to see him after a week uh, is it happening to one foot or both feet both both of them it okay. happens to both of them to all the toes to all the no, uh, yeah 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 all the toes but it starts it just starts with a single one then it starts spreading bit by bit and bit at the point bit. you couldn't walk yeah i couldn't walk as usual okay and then as uh, time went by it became worse right. it became worse it became worse mm -hmm. even the one week that the rheumatologist gave me as i went back home mm -hmm. even after using yeah, his uh, prescription, right. it was becoming worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. So after one week, I went back there, he looked at me. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, when he just looked at it like this, he just recommended that I be 
admitted at Kenyatta immediately mm -hmm. because the, uh, my you know my legs were swollen mm -hmm. and then the toes were uh, they call it gangrene it changes color to dark because the blood supply has been cut short right so there is no supply of blood to your toes mm -hmm. so what they do uh, what he did he recommended me to be admitted mm -hmm. and uh, at Kenyatta now uh, I went there and uh, they did all the tests that they, they wanted. Actually, I did s very many tests. Right. And, uh, and uh, actually, can I call it unfortunately or fortunately, mm -hmm. most, of them came, most of them came out negative. Of the tests they were running? Yeah, they okay. were coming out negative. W which were for what? Uh, they did, uh, I, I, some of them, I, 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 can I recall the names? But I think they did any test that concerns anything that concerns the veins and the, you know the blood supply okay, the, no, yeah. Yeah, these medical terms they are long and <laughs> exactly to pronounce. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right so they did them they did them i did so many mm -hmm. but all of them came out negative mm -hmm. and uh still they they held to the fact that this is small vessel vasculitis mm -hmm. So what they did, they gave me some, uh, they did some injections, they did some, you know, they did some therapy and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will tell you, the bleeding was, it, I was, I, the, the toes were now, at this point, the toes, the toes were bleeding excessively. Mm -hmm. The color had changed. Mm -hmm. And it came to a point whereby these toes were even falling off when they did the dressing. Mm -hmm. So they did the dressing then one day when they were opening mm -hmm. some of the toes I th yeah i remember one on the left mm -hmm. had fallen off by itself oh my yeah so they called in a wound specialist mm -hmm. in fact i they didn't take me even to the ward because they were dead like the toes were dead when it, once it becomes gangrene mm -hmm. darkish it it dies and then it falls off or even if it is cut off mm -hmm. i didn't even feel anything so I, your nerve your nerve uh, the nerves were dead from that point exactly oh, Th they goodness. were all dead Must to, be to a certain point it mm -hmm. was the pain was excruciating mm -hmm. it was really bad mm -hmm. So the the wound specialist told me that I don't even need to take you to the to the to, I mean to the theater. Mm -hmm. We can just do it from here. Trust me, yeah. you won't feel anything. And at this point, I remember I was in that I was you know mm -hmm. I mean I was I, I was insecure because you can imagine now like the doctor was saying you're going to lose some tissues mm -hmm. you know when the doctor says some tissues, tissues you, you yeah. it can't you know ring in your mind that you're going to lose at all oh. so to, yeah so to me it sounded something small comforting words comforting <laughs> oh my okay only to realize that i'm losing my toes so you can imagine mm -hmm. so he came with the with the tools and everything then as you see them exactly how did that click in your mind it was it was shocking. It was so sudden. Everything was so sudden. This mm -hmm. thing, these things happened suddenly. And you know, and something that is sudden, mm -hmm. it's shocking. It's confusing. It's you know, it just happens that one day you're okay. The next morning, something happens. Something, something that is so serious. Something that is so tragic. You know. And now we are speaking of a period of within a month. Within a month, exactly. You're going to lose your uh, toes within a month. Exactly. Okay. Uh -huh. So, um, he, he, decided, he, he decided to, I, he, he observed the, parano the, par the, the paranoia in me. Right. So, he wrapped me with a, with a clothing mm -hmm. and then told me to lie down. Mm -hmm. Then he took a, a needle mm -hmm. um, and then started to prick on the toes. Then he would ask me, can you feel it? Now, the fear in me mm -hmm. that if I don't tell the doctor, um, if I tell the doctor I'm not feeling it, mm -hmm. he's going to will confirm the amputate that them. Okay. So at some point, he would even not touch it, mm -hmm. then ask me, can you feel it? And then I'm like, yeah, I can feel it. Oh, my. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> I was so paranoid. I was so, in, I, like, I, I could not believe everything happening around me. Mm -hmm. It was so shocking. To, I was kind of stressed. Mm -hmm. I even got to a point of depression. It was, this was huge. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it has was to, it has huge. to. Yeah. <laughs> Considering that uh, I do events and everything, you can imagine what was going on in my, yeah. that you lose your feet now. Exactly, my toes and everything. Mm -hmm. 
So he just chopped the, I mean, amputated, amputated, um, amputated uh, about three of them mm -hmm. the first day. Mm -hmm. And I remember the moment the, f uh, the first toe fell off, mm -hmm. I, s I was, you know, I cried because there's that intimacy mm -hmm. within yourself. Yeah. Once you lose any part of your body, there's that intimacy, there's that feeling that Kunaile. Yeah, you have My lost a part yeah, of you. You've lost a part of you. Yeah. And it it, it really it it's really strong. And, and these are what they call the tissues now. Exactly. Now you can see it's your yeah, toe and I the tissues talker. now and it's a toe. Oh my you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So um it happened. Mm -hmm. He got three of them out. I mean he amputated three of them mm -hmm. the first day. And I remember he told me that I'm coming for these ones. Next time I come, I'm coming for these ones. So now be psychologically prepared. Be psychologically prepared. We have prepared. begun the journey. Exactly. <laughs> okay, how did that, that now uh, go with mm -hmm. your mind? How now you have now begun thinking of how will now people see me? How will I be walking into events now that you're an MC? Mm -hmm. uh, there's this kind of shoes you used to. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that now go with your mentality? Or um, the mental health for that purpose? It's, 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 it really gave me some post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. because um, first, of, f first and foremost, I mean, I got traumatized. True. I got depressed. Mm -hmm. By imagining, the by the fact that, you know, you don't know how your friends are going to, you know, behave towards you, like, from then on. Mm -hmm. You don't know how people are going to, you know, relate with you from then on. You don't know if you'll ever get back on that stage again to do what you used to do. And you know that is your life. That mm -hmm. is your passion. That is where you earn from. Mm -hmm. So I, to me, that was like, this is the end of everything. This is, it's done. I won't, like, I don't know if I'll ever dance again. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll ever get, you know, on stage again. Mm -hmm. I don't know even how my clients, if they hear of this, how are they are going even to have that, you know, mm -hmm. that confidence in me to deliver, you understand? Mm, true, true. So a lot was running, a lot was running in my mind and uh, it was really depressing. Who was your support system at this time? At this point, I'd like to thank, you know, my family. Mm -hmm. And even uh, some of my friends who came up, I, I mean, they showed up. But majorly, my family, even, uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, some people whom I didn't expect could be there for me even showed up, you know. Right. You know, when you're, once you're an, you are an MC, there are people who know you even whom you don't know, you know, they yeah. have an idea about you. Yeah. So people showed up. I'd like to thank uh, people. I mean, their support was overwhelming. So my mom was always around, mm -hmm. my dad was always there, my cousins, they were there all the time, mm -hmm. my brother, my elder brother, he was really, really supportive. And uh, I had friends, the friends who were there for me, mm -hmm. like, uh, if I start mentioning them, some... It's a long <laughs> list. <laughs> it's a long imagine. list. Mm -hmm. But to be specific, uh, I would like to thank... Uh, a friend of mine called Anissa. She has been there all through, even like yesterday, mm -hmm. I was with her. She has been there, uh, like she has been there. I can say she has been there for me oh. all the way. Salute. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> I'd also like to thank, you know, like uh, uh, the Mugambi's family. I'd like to thank Naj. Mm -hmm. The people were there for me and uh, I would say that that was really good. Mraya, Tim Mraya. They know themselves. Did you under, undergo any any mm. uh, counseling at the point, or the support, uh, knowing that you have a family that is there for you, helped mm. you come out of the situation? Um. Yeah, we had. Um, what I would like to tell you is that uh, if there is a project, mm -hmm. let me assure you this: if there is a project that the government is really helping people with is Kenyatta Hospital. Mm -hmm. Kenyatta Hospital is a place where I have seen people mm -hmm. getting legit help because it doesn't matter where you come from. Even, even the poor, like the poor, the poor, the poor people there, mm -hmm. they get all the major treatments and the, the social workers are there to help them even with the financial, you know, mm -hmm. burdens and everything. Right. So the, at the Kenyatta Hospital, there are specialists, there are counselors okay. who used to come in mm -hmm. 
uh, they talked to you know patients they talked to me mm -hmm. and yeah they they were really a support system that I can say played a huge role mm -hmm. in my recovery okay that yeah. that's that's wonderful mm -hmm. now uh, the day f for you to lose mm -hmm. some other tissues came mm -hmm. so uh, when the tissues were were amputated mm -hmm. the doctors at this point i would say like uh, i think it's a, it's it's more of a miracle mm -hmm. and this is a, at this point i like to say sometimes it's good to you know to believe in god it really works mm -hmm. and until you come to that point of desperation mm -hmm. you never know what this statement this statement it never makes sense i used to hear people say hey believe in god believe in god mm -hmm. but it hit me mm -hmm. and i will tell you this the toes were amputated. Mm -hmm. Once the toes are amputated, I am an adult. They can grow. They can't. True. And in fact, once they were amputated, you know mm -hmm. now the bone is exposed because there's that bone that is inside there. Mm -hmm. So the doctors were to do what we call a. Uh, they were supposed to call a, the the plastic the plastic surgeons. They were mm -hmm. supposed to come and do what we call grafting, mm -hmm. where they get a tissue from another part i mean some other part of your body mm -hmm. then they come fix it there so that it looks presentable because it just can't stay like that yeah yeah, yeah. so before the the surgical the the, the i mean the plastic surgeons came in mm -hmm. they took they i mean there were some delays because you know kenyatta is uh, there is a lot of traffic in kenyatta yeah yeah and I was, you know, I was disturbed, I was confused, I was like, why is this happening to me? Why are they taking time? Why is all this happening? Why? Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that this delay, the more they delayed, mm -hmm. the more something was happening. But you know, because, you know, now it is, you know... It's covered, you can't... It's covered. You don't know what is yeah. happening until the doctor comes and sees it. Exactly. Okay. So, the, so the, I mean, a miracle was happening because the more they delayed... Mm -hmm the more something was happening mm -hmm. which i'm about to mention mm -hmm. which doesn't happen so once they came and you know opened the the you know the the wound now mm -hmm. it was a shocking moment because they realized that the tissue was grafting it was growing on itself on itself it doesn't happen wow the doctors were shocked that's a miracle it's a miracle Mm -hmm. And everyone was in shock because this is something that doesn't happen. This is, you know, in fact, mm -hmm. there's a team called the orthopedics. These are the surgeons who deal with the bones. Mm -hmm. The orthopedics were supposed to come in mm -hmm. and, you know, give their opinion now because the bone was exposed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once the bone is, if, if, if the bone gets infected, mm -hmm. you don't heal. That is, I can say it's like death. So the orthopedics came in, they looked at it, and you know what they said? Mm -hmm. These bones are exposed. So what we're supposed to do, mm -hmm. we will have to go a step further and amputate you further. So they were supposed to, you know, the toes are gone, but right. they're not fully gone. But they're supposed to now, for them, they're supposed to even to go further, like half of the... Yeah, just, the, just yeah. in case this disease had spread. Exactly. Okay. You can imagine. So I was, at this point, I was times 10 depressed. Mm -hmm. My family was confused. Everyone got, everyone was in, you know, shock, mm -hmm. confusion, stressed, mm -hmm. because now I'm already amputated. Here are the other people, other specialists coming to say, we're going to amputate you further. Father. You understand the situation? Mm -hmm. But now everything turned around to finding out now that some tissues have now grown. This was actually before the tissues now, mm -hmm. before the tissues now, because this was, a, this was, at, the th this was at that point mm -hmm. where they did the amputation. Now, before they cover it, mm -hmm. they called in the orthopedics to advise. To advise on what would be happening uh, later. What would be happening later. Okay. So here, the orthopedics, we are going to cut you, we are going to amputate you further. Mm -hmm. So for me, I refused to sign the consent because you have to sign the consent that you agree. You know, the, the, the surgeons will advise you on what is you best can, for you. Then make the but choice. But you make the choice. Okay. So I refused to sign the consent mm -hmm. because I could not imagine myself, you know, like in that situation. The spirit was leading you to believe in God. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Those are the right words. 
my spirits refused. In mm -hmm. fact, mm -hmm. my, my family, people were confused. There some people who agreed with the orthopedics team and some disagreed. But at the end of the day, everyone's, everyone wants the best out of it. Sure. So for me, I refused. Mm -hmm. I refused. And I remember I was even, I, I, we, we had some, you know, up and downs with the, my, I remember my dad calling me that night mm -hmm. and he was like, we, don't worry, we are working on it. We are seeking even second opinions. Just don't, you know, don't panic. Mm -hmm. But I could just feel the panic at home. What yeah. was going on? Everyone is, you know, it was so conflicting. Mm -hmm. But I refused to sign. Myself, I refused to sign mm -hmm. the consent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I called in the orthopedics again and I asked them to explain to me why they're going to do the, amp the, uh, the amputation further. And mm -hmm. I was not convinced with the reasons they gave me. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this, it was a very good decision because if I had decided, you know, if, if I made up to follow what they told me. They would have acted like the following day. Exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was supposed to be done immediately. Mm -hmm. It was an, with immediate effect. Mm -hmm. But later on, we, we came to realize that that is a decision that I could have, you know, regret for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Because um, the granulation now started, like I had said earlier. Right. It started, mm -hmm. the doctor said, we are not going to even to call any other team for you. Mm -hmm. Just stay there. We observe you, Father. Because we have never seen this happening. Mm -hmm. So we are going to give you time for the, we, we see how far it can go to you know, with yeah. the granulation, right. the, the growing of the tissues. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'll never get back my, you know, my whole toe, but right. at least there's something, something that, yeah, you. something was happening. Mm -hmm. So they decided to buy time with me. Mm -hmm. And now at this moment, now it became a moment of, you know, reflection, a moment of, you know, getting to see things happening. You know, Kenyatta is either you come out of there well, or you come out of there dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At this, in this ward, I saw people dying. People were dying. Like, I even had a friend by my, my you know, you by my bed bedside. Now. Yeah, mm -hmm. by bedmates. You make friends with people. The next moment, the next, the, the next morning, you wake up. Someone is dead by your side. Mm -hmm. At some point, I was even the one, you know, calling the nurses, telling them, "Is, is he?" still alive mm, are we together <laughs> yeah and then they realize mm. he's gone mm -hmm. so at this point i did a lot of reflection i you know i got really close with my bible and everything mm -hmm. and it was a turning point because um i'll tell you this my dad used to tell us you should respect everyone around you no matter the status mm -hmm. and it really works because um while there, I got a young boy mm -hmm. who was brought in by a good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. He had no family and he could not speak. And, uh, you know, even the other patients used to look down on him, like, you know, they despise him and everything. Mm -hmm. But once I got there, like, I started to, you know, kind of support the boy, even telling the others to, you know, this is a small boy, mm -hmm. just don't be too much on him. Yeah. And this is the person, this is the boy whom, because you know, your family in Kenyatta, your family is not allowed to stay with you overnight. Right. So once the family is gone and, you know, I want to go to, you know, to the washrooms and everything, this is the boy who, oh, like, yeah, one day yeah. just woke up, fetched the wheelchair for me, put me on the wheelchair and took me to the washroom. Mm. Like someone whom you would think is a nobody and you know, mm -hmm. is that he was that person who was there for me in the most desperate moments right. in my life. Yeah, really important. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I remember one morning I woke up, pain woke me up. In fact, pain used to wake me up. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you this, from October 20th, 2019, to this moment as I speak with you, mm -hmm. I don't know what, I, I, I don't know what having a good sleep, I can't remember the last time I had a good sleep mm -hmm. since then. I have, even at the moment, mm -hmm. as I speak with you, I don't get sleep. So sleep, I mean, pain used to wake me up, so that day it was really bad. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the nurses won't be there all the time, uh, you understand? The other people to be better than to, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, I was in a position where I couldn't even walk, mm -hmm. I could not even put my, there's a point where I couldn't even put my, you know, mm -hmm. my, my toes on the ground. Mm -hmm. 
I, like it was so sensitive it was super sensitive right. and even when it comes to the moment where you want to go to the washroom you start having that fear because you you know what it, what it takes to get there right. the pain yeah. Yeah. it was really bad yeah. in fact i used to cry like a baby and you see once I, you see a grown up right. crying out of pain there's something there's something mm -hmm. i used to feel it from the back of my head it was really bad mm -hmm. and even the rheumatologist used to tell me this this, this condition i can't call it a disease it's a condition mm -hmm. this small vessel vasculitis it will frustrate you it is it is a condition that frustrates people with pain mm -hmm. it will frustrate you with a lot and lot, lots and lots of pain and i'll tell you this that day i woke up started shouting you know calling names because you know what once you're in pain you are traumatized you don't even know what you are saying i think the nurses were not anywhere around and this is the boy who like heard of me he rushed out there i went to look for people i mean mm -hmm. i'll tell you this it is just healthy it is just the best way forward to go i mean it is just the best thing to do to respect everybody no matter the status because you'll never know who will be there for you when you know you are most desperate oh true that's 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 true yeah now um when now the the day that came now you they found uh, the uh your toes are now doing even better mm. what happened next um when they found the toes were doing better they decided to buy time with me mm -hmm. because they wanted to see how far the granulation the granulation now is now uh maybe for the sake of the viewers mm -hmm. granulation is where now the the bone once you amputated there is the bone that is inside there now it will it will be exposed because the whole of this tissue is you know mm -hmm. cut off right so once this bone is exposed the 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 bone now is exposed at the front mm -hmm. the granulation is the process where now the tissue comes up start and starts covering the the yeah, bone the that bone. is exposed that is now the granulation so they wanted to observe how far the granulation could go mm -hmm. because they could not interfere with the natural response of the body mm -hmm. they had to allow it to you know to observe it and you know allow it and see how far it could go how long did that take the granulation took um i would say a month or oh, still in kenyatta now this is the Even second month yeah exactly now this is the second month but they had to uh, it, it came to a point where they had to send me home okay because they concluded that uh things were good a miracle has happened miracle now you're back happening. home exactly uh, are you able to walk still not really mm -hmm. i am able to you know walk but not 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 like i could not walk f for long like uh i mean within the house mm -hmm. did you did, did you require any clenches to walk around or someone would hold you someone would hold me okay yeah someone would hold me but at kenyatta it was much worse because i could not even you know mm -hmm. i could not even like i used to use i i could the only thing the only way i could you know mm -hmm. mobility was within a wheelchair right yeah wow now you have gone home mm -hmm. how did your people receive you how are they now treating you vis-a-vis mm -hmm. uh, -vis when you're in hospital now you're back home your mm -hmm. friends did they come by the way did you lose friends or you gained mm -hmm. others um before when we get home let me thank uh there was some doctors like doctor there's dr zubeida mm -hmm. there's dr mariam dr kiari was the really supportive I would like to thank them for you know the whole the amount of love they showed me the support system and everything. Mm -hmm. So here I am at home. Um f in okay. <laughs> What's really funny at this point? Mm -hmm. I stayed in Kenyatta for one month and two weeks. Mm -hmm. And you know we take a lot for granted. I got out of hospital and I saw a car. I was so excited to see a car. Because you can imagine I was in the ward mm -hmm. for one month and two weeks. I don't see anything outside. Like Unless you don't see the patients. outside world exactly. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I saw was a car outside there parked. Mm -hmm. I was so excited to see a car. I was so excited to see like the mm -hmm. outside world. Mm, every person uh, minding their business is doing their things. Exactly. Okay. I was so excited and at that point I knew that we take a lot for granted. Mm -hmm. Once you're just healthy, you're good, 
that is everything that you need. You don't need mm -hmm. anything else. You just need your health. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got out of hospital, mm -hmm. and uh, I would say um, coming out of the hospital was a bit exciting. Mm -hmm. It was exciting, yeah. Right. But it was also I was also anxious. Because I didn't know how people, even you know, friends would, you know, behave towards me. I didn't know if things would be back to normal or something. But the friends that I knew, the friends whom I had, they really supported me. Mm -hmm. In fact, they beat my my expectation. Because mm -hmm. some people would even come, you know, and ask me. I was, you know, that was, it was within my, it was, it was within, you know, my cocoon that, Okay, I had my own thoughts about, mm -hmm. you know, how people would perceive the whole situation and everything. Mm -hmm. But I was shocked. It beat my expectation. My friends were very supportive. Even those who are not able even, you know, mm -hmm. some friends don't have resources even, I mean, to come because some of them are in the up country and everything. Mm -hmm. But the calls, you know, the, the energy, even, you know, it was mm. very positive. True. Very positive. Mm. They even came to see me at home. Some mm. could even travel all the way from Naro. People come to see me. All come the way from Nakuru. I remember there's a, even people who came all the way from Mombasa. They came to see me all the way. That, that's supporting enough and it's exactly. wonderful. Now, mm. there's one thing as, as we wind up, we are running out of time. Yeah. Uh, there's one thing we would like to understand. Mm. Now, how rare is this condition at, and what causes it? Small vessel vasculitis, there is, there is small vessel vasculitis, mm -hmm. medium, mm -hmm. and there is large. Medium and uh, large is common mm -hmm. in adults and everywhere. It is there. Mm -hmm. It is a condition that is there. Mm -hmm. But for small vessel vasculitis, it's quite rare because it is a condition that only attacks the kids. Right. But for adults, it doesn't happen according to what the doctors told me. This is, this is information that I got from the doctors. Mm -hmm. In adults, it is very rare. And even the word that they put me in, the word that they put me in at Kenyatta is a word that uh, the patients who are there are patients who suffer from conditions that are very rare. Mm -hmm. So this is a very rare condition in adults. And even the rheumatologist himself told me that in my whole career, 40 years career, mm -hmm. you're the first patient mm -hmm. I am treating, I, I mean, I'm seeing with small vessel vasculitis, an mm -hmm. adult with small vessel vasculitis. That is how rare it is. Mm -hmm. And this is a condition. This is a condition whereby the white blood cells, they become excess in your body. Okay. Once they become excess, mm -hmm. they now confuse one part of your body to a disease. They think it's an enemy. Oh, they start fighting. They start fighting it. An enemy within. An enemy within. Oh, my. So it's the body fighting itself. Mm -hmm. So it attacks that uh, part of the body, normally the extremes, mm -hmm. the toes and the, you know, right. the fingers. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough it didn't get it to my, you know, my fingers. Finger, it got right. the toes. Mm. So it attacks the extremes. It, you know, there is that what we call the, the it, it, normally what it does, it, 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 uh, I mean, the veins, I think the, the, the veins, they, they, they swell up, then they, they cut short the blood supply to that part of the body. Mm -hmm. That's why it becomes dark and it dies. It kills the, it completely. The, the boulder, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So once the, ve the, the vessels are, you know, mm -hmm. swollen, the blood supply is, you know, cut short. Okay. And that is where now the toes, I mean, that's the extremes now become gangrene that, and then they die. Uh, uh, from, from the doctors, is it something that is preventable or if it happens, you just wait for the treatment? Uh, this condition is quite rare. Mm -hmm. And even the doctors himself, I could observe they were, at some point, they were becoming, you know, somehow confused. Mm -hmm. I could tell they were okay. becoming, I mean, they were, they were confused. But I think in children, because it's a condition that attacks children. Mm -hmm. In children, in fact, it even heals itself. Mm -hmm. it's, it, I can't call it a disease. It's a condition. Right. In children, it heals itself. Okay. But once it attacks an adult, mm -hmm. it becomes now what? It's become tragic, like it happened to me. All right. Um, mm -hmm. I hate to say this, but... Um it uh, seems so you are an MC, yeah. you are affected sometimes in October last year yeah. and uh, maybe towards even December. Yeah. And uh, these are the times, these are the peak time in your career. Yeah. 
uh, mm. where we have events, you have to MC. Yeah. And right now, we are speaking of COVID-19, where we have we do not have social gathering, so no events you are holding. Mm. How has that affected your career as we finish? Just as you said, you can just imagine. I started my quarantine in October twentieth, mm -hmm. and like the rest of the people, mm -hmm. it affected me. Like it affected me on both ends. Like on all ends, it hit me hard because uh, December was, you know, that is the moment whereby, in fact, mm -hmm. when I was headed to the hospital, when I got admitted, mm -hmm. some clients were calling me. Mm -hmm. they, some clients don't know you're in bed, you're, mm -hmm. you're admitted. Mm -hmm. Some clients could call me while in hospital for events. Oh my. You can imagine how traumatizing it was. Some mm -hmm. clients used to call me. And I can assure you, it affected, you know, it affected me like financially, I was really hit hard. Mm -hmm. Psychologically, I was hit hard. It hit hard on all ends. Mm -hmm. Because you can imagine now, here you'll be, yeah, like, I mean, you're be, like, you are healing. And then COVID-19 is here. And you know, for the doctors told me, for this condition to, you know, the infection itself, mm -hmm. leave alone the toes. Mm -hmm. The toes is, a, is just an, uh, an effect. Mm -hmm. For the infection to, 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 to clear in the body, it will take about a year. So you're still on meds? I'm still on meds as we speak. Okay. So, the, so what I can really tell you is that for, for someone like me, you know, COVID-19, once it hits, mm -hmm. The, uh, the aged mm -hmm. and anyone who is, you know, who, who, whose immunity is, you know, mm -hmm. not stable, it's tragic. So mm -hmm. for me, I have to be, you know, mm -hmm. to be grounded completely. All right. Um, yeah. I'm really hoping uh, things will come out uh, well very soon and you will go back to your business. You have mm -hmm. lost a lot of chum. And as a young person, I know you have been affected. So I'm giving you 30 seconds. This is your camera. Mm -hmm. um, speak to someone out there mm -hmm. uh 30 seconds we finish okay so um for the viewers what i like to say is that uh we should be very careful with uh the facilities once you are you know i mean you're not well you should be very careful with the facilities that you visit because a good percentage of people are suffering or even dying because of what we call misdiagnosis like I said, you heard my story. At the beginning, I went to a clinic and they diagnosed me for, ga for gout. And on the other end, I had small vessel vas vasculitis. So I would like to tell the viewers, you should be careful with the facilities that you go into. And you, you should be able to even question what is done to you. So basically, let's be you know, vigilant with uh, our health. And I will also let's be a people a nation that support uh, that support we support one another let's be a support system that you know we watch each other and with that god first that's the way to go mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Elias, for coming and sharing your story. I'm sure mm -hmm. someone out there has learned something and uh, mm -hmm. <sighs> your story is quite something. Exactly. We wish you all the best. Back home, thank you so much for keeping us company. We'll be taking a very short break. Then the interview of politics comes up next. Stay with us. My name is Dereva Hilary. Good morning.